going to start off with some of the weapons. We're in World War II, but we're going to go back to World War I with the 1903. <laughs> it was a bolt action rifle. It fired a 30 odd 6 caliber cartridge, but you can see every round had to be racked individually. Very slow, it held five rounds. That's why I haven't got Some of you that know weapons kind of look at it and say, looks like a German K-98. It does. It does. So, <laughs> the Germans found out about this and was like, ah, that's a patent breach right there. So the, they, the, the United States was actually sued for patent breach during uh, World War I. Now obviously when World War I kicks off, we're like, yeah, we're not going to pay that. You know? <laughs> but this rifle, a lot of people think that this is like an early war rifle. Nobody really used it. This was used heavily during the Normandy campaign. They used it for launching grenades. Um, it was a very, very accurate rifle. It was a very reliable rifle. So we'll go ahead here and uh, show you the capability of the 1903. All right. You know, us as Americans were like, I don't like doing that. I, I don't like that whole action. I want it so. The next gun is probably the most American gun. Every, it's just, just screams. Everybody knows the name. It's just like, man, if this is American ingenuity, I don't know what is. But it was designed by a Canadian. <laughs> so the M1 Garand fired the same 30 6 cartridge that the 1903 did, but it was eight rounds, it was in an end block, and it was semi-automatic. So for two rounds that maybe a German can get off on their main battle rifle, you could rip off all eight rounds. Now who here, we're gonna do, we're gonna do a little bit of myth busting. Who here has heard about the grand ping sound? The ping, yeah, everybody. And, and you'll hear guys talk and they'll say that the Germans, that they, they would listen for that ping and they knew that ping sound hit and when they knew they knew the American was out and they would you know go get him. How many of you have been here for the beach battle? All right. Do you think for a second that any German is going to be sitting there going, Dita, did you hit the ping? Did you hit the ping? No. That ain't happening. Your head's pinned down, you don't know what's going, you're not listening for pings. You got a battalion of hundreds, if not thousands, of guys firing his gun, along with artillery, planes streaking over. You ain't listening for nothing, but you're just going, I don't want to get shot. That's yeah. basically the, the plan of attack. So that was completely and utterly false. If you ever hear that, you can be like, Matt, yeah, yeah. so let's go ahead, let's uh, see what the M1 Garand can do. One more. There's the yeah. I heard it. You got another one? Let's do it again. Let's give him another shot. Yeah. I was going to reduce his rank. Yeah. <laughs> Trench warfare, 
that once you got to the trench, you had to, you, 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 you needed something other than the bolt action 1903. So this gun was developed so that when somebody got to that trench, that they would have a machine gun that would be able to be, sweep that trench, a trench broom. You hear it referred to as a trench broom. World War I ends, the auto ordnance company is like, got 15,000 of these, what do we do with them? I mean, this was meant for war. So they did the next best thing. They sold them to uh, stores and Sears catalogs, and that's where they sold them to. Um, typically, a lot of people, you'll know the names, the John Dillingers of the world, really loved this gun. Um, they were using them, but the auto ordnance company still wanted to sell it as a military weapon. So they start trying to sell it to other nations. Uh, the Marine Corps is actually the first to use the Thompson um, in the interwar years, the Banana Wars. Um, they were actually hired as mail guards and the, the U.S. Postal Service had Thompsons that they armed the Marines with. And Marines being Marines, were like, we're gonna take these. Um, they loved them. Um, they tried selling them to England before the war, and England's like, ah, that's got that's got like a gangster image, you know, not not in the, the royal military, no. But then a short little guy with a mustache starts starting some shenanigans, and they went, you know what? We changed our mind. We'll we'll, we'll take the Thompson. They start buying it. The U.S. military adopts it and becomes one of the most iconic firearms during World War II and pretty much of all time. So. Um, I mean, you guys heard my spiel. You guys don't want to hear it fire. You guys don't. Yeah, we do. No, no, no. We want to hear. It. I want to hear. It. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Saving Private Ryan or somebody with the Thompson and they seem to just be firing for forever. That was 20 rounds like that. My my uh my wife's grandfather served in the 6th Armored Division and the first time I brought a Thompson, I wanted to show it to him. I brought it to the house and he looks at it and he's like, this is nice. He goes, this is good, but he's like, my favorite Thompson of all time is Sergeant Sanders. Sergeant Saunders from Combat, the, the, the TV oh, yeah. series. Ah. And I said, well, it's the, it's the same Thompson. And he goes, no, no, it's not. He goes, his never ran out of ammo. <laughs> <laughs> I said, fair enough, fair enough. You guys want to hear it one more time? Yeah! yeah. The, the military tried replacing it because, again, it was roughly about $200 um, a gun. Very expensive during that time. They end up creating the, the grease gun. You guys have heard the M3 grease gun, which, for the, I mean, if anybody's a General Motors fan, General Motors produced it. Uh, they produced it for around 13 bucks. It was two pieces of stamp steel with a bolt and a barrel. It worked phenomenally. And as a matter of fact, that M3 grease gun was used all the way up through the first Gulf War. Tankers were at, because it was nice, it had a collapsible stock on it, had a slow rate of fire. So tankers that were in, you know, Kuwait, Saudi Arabia, Iraq, still had M3 grease guns wow. in the 90s that they were using.